Shopfloor Tracking ADC combines the features and functionality of Shopfloor Tracking with the portability and convenience of automated data collection. It's designed primarily for use with VT terminals on Shopfloor for the clock in and clock out. We have the setup start and the setup stop, the run start and run stop, indirect start and indirect stop, break start and break stop, as well as elapsed labor. To support the ADC functionality, we have a new parameter called ADC elapsed time default. This parameter will dictate the default value for the elapsed time prompt in ADC activity start function. The valid values will be yes or no, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later. Some additional parameters to keep in mind. The employee clock in or clock out determines whether the employee needs to clock in before starting a task. We have the materials allocation parameter, which prevents the work order from tracking before materials have been allocated. The DOS fab, which determines whether the work order must be printed before tracking. And then the control on the operation, which prevents the operation from being tracked if the previous operation has not been completed. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now the shop floor items for ADCs can be accessed through the desktop interface. If you look under ADC, Manufacturing, you'll have the shop floor tracking submenu, and then you can access clock in, clock out, and so forth. But primarily these screens are designed to be used on a handheld scanner, some sort of dummy terminal, terminal etc. So in order to mimic that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the new functions through the Telnet client. So I've already logged into the system, and you'll see here the first option I have is my ADC profile. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Then I'll go down to Manufacturing, and then the submenu for shop floor tracking. Here I have the ability to clock in, clock out, do a setup start, a setup stop, run start, run stop, indirect start and stop, and then the brakes, and of course, a lapse labor. So first let's take a look at clocking in an employee. So if I select clock in, I can enter my employee ID, and my site will default from employee maintenance, and go ahead and OK, and it'll give me the prompt that that particular employee has been clocked in at a certain time. I also have the ability to use teams, just like we do in shop floor tracking phase two. So if I enter my summary team, Again, defaults to the site setup in employee maintenance, and hit OK. I've clocked in my whole team at 1251. We also observe the rules of shop floor tracking in that a detailed team cannot be clocked in. So if I were to try to t clock in my team, I'll receive the error that the employee is a detailed team and therefore cannot be clocked in. Okay, now that we have some employees and a team clocked in, let's go ahead and look at starting a function. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Setup Start. I'll enter my employee ID again, Site Defaults, and then we'll get the work order selection. Now generally on a gun they may scan this information or they may already know the work order, but we do have the option um, to do a lookup that will display all the open work orders for that particular site. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Select and you'll see I have my work order number here. Now these work orders do observe the two parameters that we talked about. Um, it, we can't track if we have materials that have not been allocated um, and also the determination whether the work order must be printed before tracking. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the work order that I want to work on. Hit enter and then I can select my operation. Now this is going to observe uh, the parameter to prevent the operation from being tracked if the previous operation has not been completed. I'm going to go ahead and select 10. I'll have my machine number. M number of machines is 0 uh, and my work center is assembly and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now you'll see that that particular function has been started at 1253. Go ahead and hit OK. And now let's go ahead and start a run. Enter my employee ID again and my site. This time I'll just go ahead and enter my work order number. 
enter my operation, assemblies, and I'm going to hit OK. Now we get the message just like we did in the desktop interface um, where the selected operation has an active setup. Do you want to stop the uh, setup to start the run activity? I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And then you'll see I have that particular operation started at 1254. So now let's go ahead and take a look at entering indirect time. Let's say I need to enter a meeting for my summary team. So I'm going to go ahead and go to indirect start. I'll enter my employee ID. It's my summary team. My site defaults to what's in employee maintenance. I can select, say it's admin time. And now you'll see that I have elapsed, yes. Now this comes from the new parameter that we have, the ADC elapsed time default. It'll dictate whether this is set to yes automatically or no. And this is kind of a combination of what we saw with elapsed labor in the desktop interface of shop floor tracking. We've combined it here in indirect and in break just for ease of use. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this set to yes. And it was a 60 minute meeting, hit okay and you'll see that the elapsed indirect time has been created. Now to further that, if I need to put my employees on break, I'm gonna go ahead and go to break start. I will enter my single employee with the site code. I'm gonna go ahead and enter a break and hit okay. And this will start my break at 1336. What I can do from there is go ahead and hit okay. Let's take my employee off of break and enter the employee ID. Break code automatically defaults because it knows that I'm already on a break. I'm going to hit OK and it will show that my break has ended. Now we talked about the elapsed labor being combined a bit in indirect and uh, break. We also have the elapsed labor to enter for any setup activities or runtime activities. So if I want to go ahead and select elapsed labor, I'm going to enter my summary team. I'll enter the work order we were using earlier. My operation, they did one hour of setup and two hours run. We completed nine items and you'll see here we have the check just like we do in shop floor tracking uh, where in the desktop version where if the actual quantity is larger it will give us a warning. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Reject quantity was one. Give it a rechecked reason and if I'm not sure of that reason I could use the lookup and then whether I want to close the order. I'm going to go ahead and leave that to yes. Then I'll hit OK and you'll see that the elapsed labor is created. Now if I go back into elapsed labor, it's important to note that we also observe the rules that we have for shop floor tracking, whereas if an employee doesn't have access to elapsed labor, they're unable to enter any records. So if I go ahead and try to enter my detail employee, I'll get the message that that employee ID does not have access to elapsed labor. Now to bring this all together, we can see those transactions that we created in ADC within shop floor tracking within the X3 desktop. So if I go into employee activity, I can go over to teams, enter my summary team, and then hit search. You see I have my clock in records. I also have the indirect record I entered for the meeting. I have my setup records for that work order and then my run records as well. If I want to clear out that team, and look at my employee ID for today's date and hit search. You see I also have the clock in records for them. I have the break, the setup, and so forth.